What up and welcome back to another Malazan Book of the Fallen video. I'm excited for this one because we're doing a general overview and a breakdown of the Warrens. Before we get too deep into this video, I do have an announcement to make because this is the week that we formally endorse for the 2020 election, and we're just going to put it right out there, but uh, to hole and bug, that's the platform. So yeah, we're going to be shipping that one all the way through to November. Big fan of the platform, and uh, I think there's an economic resurgence in our near future. We're going to try and keep this one pretty spoiler free in general. And then maybe on Wednesday or Thursday, I'm still working out my my twice a week schedule. Then we'll continue on this kind of Warren series talking about the houses, the holds, and then maybe another video on like the gods and ascendancy and worshipers and how the whole kind of pantheon works. But for this one, if you're not all the way done with the main series, that shouldn't be a problem because this is just going to be, again, a generalized breakdown of the Warrens. Okay, so let's talk about the first order of business, which is just what are the Warrens, right? And so the Malazan system of magic is a function of basically accessing a source of power and then being able to channel that power for a desired purpose. So unlike the Wheel of Time where you were channeling basically the one true source, the Malazan magic system has myriad sources of magic and those essentially are the Warrens. And what I really like about this magic system is that it seems so unique. So these Warrens are actually like physical dimensions or realms or planes of existence. And the, the Warrens themselves are kind of pathways into those realms. And so I really like the Tattersail quote that happens early on in Gardens of the Moon where she talks about the Warrens and magical power being like a doorway, right? Where you nudge the doorway open, accessing that physical realm somewhere else, and then drawing forth the power out of that realm to shape and mold here in our own world. So anytime we really see a mage in the Malazan world use her power, what she's really doing is accessing a doorway, a pathway into these other worlds and then kind of siphoning off that power that resides in those areas to use and shape and direct to her own purposes here in our world. The Warrens broadly can be broken down into two primary categories. We have the kind of younger Warrens, the pathways as they're called sometimes, and then there's also the Elder Warrens. And the two are kind of related, but one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is that it's not totally clear all those linkages. In fact, if you go on the wiki, which if you haven't finished the series, I don't advise because there's a lot of spoilers. But, uh, you know, if you check out the chart that's on the wiki describing the Warrens, it's just pretty very clear and straightforward to understand. Here, let me show you. So yeah, problem case closed, right? Not a lot of questions. And sarcasm is like a second language. Yeah. So even for somebody who's on their third read through of the books, it's uh, not exactly straightforward how all those different webs and interconnections, I feel like that guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, right? Trying to figure out all the different ropes. But the way to kind of keep it straight in your head is just that the, uh, the elder Warrens are the Warrens from back in the day and when we're talking in malazan terms back in the day equates to hundreds of thousands if not millions of years ago um, the elder warrens are typically race specific right so you have these uh elder warrens that are tied to a specific race corald galane to the tistandi omtos falak to the jagat uh talon to the Talon Imas, obviously, and uh, and so forth, right? So they were really segregated by race. 
And then within those kind of elder warrens, each one is kind of aspected to a physical form, a natural kind of element, a natural state, a physical form, however you want to describe that. Things like ice, uh, fire, light, darkness, right? These kinds of things are all um, aspected to these elder warren. So they're race specific and they, they kind of take on some natural characteristic from the natural world. And then the paths are the younger of the warrens, right? And these are the warrens that humans actually use to access these different realms, uh, dimensions, what have you. In a future video, we'll get into all the nitty gritty and spoilery stuff behind the origins of the warrens and how the elder warrens relate to these younger pathways and kind of all the dynamics involved there. They're still largely aspected to physical, natural forms, things like darkness, light, fire, land, um, earth, rock, however you want to categorize, dris. Um, so a lot of similarities to the, the Elder Warrens, both in terms of the things that they're aspected to and also just the way uh, that mages use these Warrens to, to create effects here in, in our world. And when you add them all up, there's that we know of 12 of these quote unquote warrens that different mages are able to access. All right, so let's just take a minute, talk about the logistics of using magic and being a mage in the Malazan world. Most of the time, it's like an innate ability, right? People are born with the ability to access these warrens. Uh, you do find some who who actually have been taught or learned how, um, you know, later on. But for the most part, the vast majority of these mages are are kind of natural born. And some people don't even recognize that they themselves are mages. And so in that way, there's kind of a, a corollary to what you see in the Wheel of Time, like with the Wilders who were channeling and didn't realize it. And actually, um, without totally spoiling it, if you go back and read Path to Ascent, Ascendancy in Kalenved's Reach, one of the characters goes through the whole entire book and doesn't realize that he's a mage until the very end of the book when somebody else tells him. And so, um, yeah, it's a natural kind of inborn thing and also uh, people don't necessarily even know that it's there all the time. Usually when you're born, you kind of are predisposed to one specific warren. There are people who can access multiple warrens, including people like uh, my boy Beak and everybody's favorite Quick Ben, who can access, you know, almost all the warrens, essentially, for all intents and purposes. But but for the most part, you kind of have your specialized warren that that's like your jam. And then, you know, you have other ones maybe that you can dabble with a little bit, but you always usually have a, a primary and most people just have like one, maybe two Warrens that they can access. So you kind of develop these specialized magics and that's what makes it so cool is that you have all these different mages and it's really hard to say like who's the most powerful, although I will be doing a most powerful mages uh, video at some point, but uh yeah, it's cool because all the magics are a little bit different and have their different kind of pros and cons. And so, um, you know, which brings me to my next point that there's a lot of variation in power levels. So certain Warrens are better at certain things. And and within that, you even have different levels of power. So um, some mages might be able to all access um, Rashan as an example, or Denul, right? But then there's certain levels of healing that people can do with that Denul Warren, right? So you have people like Mallet who are like insane, epic healers. And then you've got other folks who, who can kind of access that Warren, but then they're not able to do that much in the way of actual valuable healing. It is kind of physically demanding to be a channeler. We see many examples throughout the book that when mages access their warren, either A, they kind of are hesitant to access their warren because they don't want to draw themselves down too much because it's just so exerting to, to access your warren or to do kind of heavy lifting with your warren, if you will. 
But then the the flip side of that is that we see people really run down after having gone through a major kind of battle where they had to use all kinds of magic, right? Even at the end of Gardens of the Moon, uh, we see Quick Ben access like seven Warrens at once, and then he's like straight up haggard after that. And so uh, it, is, it does take a, a pretty big physical toll. There's a cost to using magic in the Malazan world. In some cases, we even see uh, folks go so big that it drains them completely and they end up getting 86 completely. Again, I don't want to spoil the later part of the books, but uh, those mages who can really access all the Warrens and throw everything they have at the enemy on the battlefield um, do sometimes pay the price. And I know um, some of you out there know what I'm talking about. It still hurts. It does. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. The other cool thing is that mages, like even if you're not from the same Warren or if you can't access the same Warren as another mage, they can kind of like sense each other. And so there's always these kind of giant pissing contests going on. They also physically affect one another. Sometimes you'll be around another mage and you get like a major headache or like a coughing fit or it smells like spicy scents, etc. Um, so there's just all these cool interactions between people who can access warrens and who are mages and just kind of how the power itself works and and how they use it and to that end you can see mages using magic for virtually every purpose right there's like uh offensive um uses where they're creating weapons or throwing lightning bolts at people or channeling uh the seas up to capsize boats or to uh, have you know storm clouds come in and obstruct enemy views there's defensive uses as well um, basically everything that you're going to find out on a battlefield right uh, but then there's also just the kind of mundane uses where people are using it to do everyday tasks like to heat up my tea kettle or to uh, levitate that book over to me for reading or to light my pipe or whatever and so it it really is just kind of an all-purpose tool but what's interesting Interesting is that each Warren being aspected to like a its own physical form or a natural element or what have you is kind of lends itself to certain activities. If you think about Driss or something like that, uh, that would be killer if you were in like the mining business and you had to like go in and feel around in in the earth or like the tennis warren that Kaladin Brood uses, right? If you were like a geologist and looking for precious minerals or uh, wealth generation for an economy or something like that, then uh, that would be much more useful than the people who can access like fear and therefore channel you know light that's not going to be that helpful at looking for stuff underground you also see just basic like spell casting right like disguises illusion making people trip out and think they saw stuff that they didn't uh long distance communication you see it used as a means of travel right because these warrens are actually um, pathways into these other realms you see people jump into those other realms walk for an hour and then they're able to like pop out you know what would have taken weeks and months in terms of journey to walk hundreds and thousands of miles and so uh the the use of the magic in the world is really cool and you never know what to expect because they can really use magic for anything they want so let's run down the list real quick of the 12 major younger pathways slash warrens that most humans are using in the book to access and channel magic the first one is Denol, and that's the pathway of healing. One of the, the notable mages there is Mallet from the Bridge Burners, who is able to heal most people except for that one person that we all really wanted to get squared away. I won't spoil it, but uh, again, daggers in the heart, man. There's some brutal ones. Wah! We're going alphabetical, so the next one is Driss, the Warren of Stone. This is the one that both Blues from late on in Gardens of the Moon and also Uncle Mamat from Darugistan use, <laughs> both of which are like incredible badasses. And uh, and so Driss is a powerful Warren for sure. The next one is Hood's Path. That's the path of death. You see uh, some really powerful mages using this Warren, including Cowl 
from the Crimson Guard. And then, of course, Hood's Path is also the, the source of power that undergirds our boys Bauchelaine and Corbel Brooch through all of their shenanigans that they get into in this kind of side adventure series. Then we've got Manasse, which is the Path of Shadow, and it's dedicated to our boy Shadow Throne. And you see people like uh, Bottle and Shadow Throne obviously accessing the Manasse Warren throughout the books. By being a mage, you can access the Shadow Warren, right? Then they're able to uh, manipulate shadows. They can sneak around very well. And so each one, again, kind of has its own advantages. Makra is the path of the mind, and this is the one that Kalit, who is the mage that dies almost immediately in Gardens of the Moon, uses, uh, as well as Pearl, who is a timeless character that goes all the way back, I think, to the beginning of the, the Path to Ascendancy prequels, and also shows up in the Malazan Book of the Fallen, is a big practitioner of this, and they're able to kind of manipulate perception and get away with stuff and persuasion, etc. Rashan is the path of darkness, and this is the one that Sister of the Cold Nights, Night Chill, uses at the beginning of Gardens of the Moon. This is also actually the one that Hairlock was using before he went all nuts and started using chaos all crazy and then uh, got a little cuckoo. Ruse is the path of the sea, and so again, this one's great for manipulating oceans and storms and weather. You see people like uh, everybody's favorite, Malik Rex hitting that one up you also see cowl access ruse and so he's just another one of those totally badass mages who can actually hit up multiple different warrens and i think that's really the the best measure of how powerful a mage is is not just how powerful they are in their own kind of home turf warren but how many warrens they can actually access and use we have Cirque, which is the path of the sky, and that's one that Osirk obviously can access. Talas is the path of fire, and that's a pretty cool one to have. And all those little uh, teenage pyromaniacs from back in the day like me can relate to, to wanting a, a warren that lets you manipulate fire. But you see people like Sin uh, using that one to great effect. You also see Smokey use it, and your boy Tay Shren can throw some fire when he wants to. I mentioned Tenes already, and that's the one that Kaladin Brood uses, and hence his kind of deep connection to burn and the soul of the earth and the land, because that is uh, the pathway of land. And then last but not least is Thier, and that's the Warren of Light, and the one that our homegirl Tattersail uses like crazy that sets off this kind of crazy reaction when it butted up against uh, Onos to Ulan's Warren out in the Gadrobi Hills. So those are the 12 Warrens that the the human population of the Malazan world uses. And uh, again, just a lot of different variety, and I think it's just a very cool system. And then the Elder Warrens are pretty much correlates to all of the younger Warrens that we just ran through. So we have like Curled Ghislaine, which is the um, Elder Warren of Darkness. We have Curled Emerlin, which is the Elder Warren of Shadow. We've got an Elder Warren dedicated to Light. We've got the Danath Elder Warren dedicated to the seas. Omtos Falak is kind of different because it's not really lining up exactly with one of these uh, younger Warrens, but there are these kind of like race-specific Warrens because there's the Kachain Shemal Warren, and I'm not going to try it and butcher it. I'll just flash it up here on the screen somewhere. That way I don't butcher it. But you also have the same thing with the Forkroll Assail uh, Warren. And so those are kind of peas in a pod in the sense that they're just race specific and not necessarily aspected to the same exact things that the human Warrens are. And then, of course, last but not least is Starvald Demolane. That's the first Warren, the Dragon Warren. Um, that was the one that kind of started it all. That's where the real badasses like Anamanda Rake could uh, 
channel and access both Carole Ghislaine as a Tis Dandee, but also access as a soul taken uh, dragon, Elaine, right? He could access Starval Demolaine, and he was using that uh, in some cases over Carole Ghislaine many times throughout the, the series. So, yeah. That's a general overview and my take on the Warrens and kind of how they work. I looked up the wiki and read a bunch of forum articles, but uh, I'm curious to know your thoughts and let me know how I did down in the comments below. I love the magic system. I think it's very cool. I think it's neat how all the different characters have different levels of strength and different abilities and nobody really knows how to judge everybody else again you get all these kind of pissing contests and and just get to see some people who are truly um, badass when it comes to magic and and just makes the story a lot of fun Again, for me, this is a character-driven story, and it's the the empathy and the, the ability to put yourself in these other people's shoes. We were talking about it in the Discord the other day, but it's really not a kind of destination story where it's uh, black and white. There's, you know the cause of light and the cause of darkness and good versus evil. And it comes to this like climax at the end of the books where we really resolve that fundamental conflict. It's more about the journey and, and the kind of experience and relationships that you form with these people, uh, throughout the the series and so i love the magic part of it no doubt for sure it's fantasy and uh, that's what we're in it for but uh yeah it has so many other killer elements too so we'll go ahead and leave this one there but we will pick up in another video with a kind of more detailed dive into the warrens and where they came from and how the holds and the houses relate to each other and all that good stuff. And then maybe a couple more videos about uh, gods and ascendancy and power amongst the pantheons. So thanks again so much for watching. As always, these are a lot of fun. We'll be picking up with Dead House Gates on Sunday to jump into the prologue and then we'll take it from there i think we're gonna have weekend videos be dedicated to chapter by chapter stuff and then the midweek videos will be dedicated to special topics like the warrens or character deep dives or theories speculation news updates what have you so uh yeah Thanks again. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have, turn on those post notifications so that you never miss a video. And uh, yeah, until then, happy reading.